What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Morg's Brew. Today we're going to be looking at my ramp pump. This is going to form part of the ramp pump series that I've already started putting together. You can see the link to my playlist up in the top over there. Go and have a look at what else I've done about ramp pumps. There's a number of other videos about this system and about the evolution of the system. But today we're simply going to be changing the seal in the pressure chamber valve. Um, we first got to go and put some air in that tire. And then we're going to shoot down to the dam. I'll take you guys along with me. So let's go. here that we put together in the ultimate DIY ramp pump which you can find linked up in one of these sides here basically our pipe goes along here it goes up through the bush just down pipe and into our ramp pump let's go get down there <laughs> So this is the pump as it is now. I've just taken the head off. Well, I took the head off yesterday. That's up at the workshop now. We're going to go check it out. But here's what I'm going to do. is I'm going to take off this fitting here. Get to our uh, valve on the inside there. So yeah, this is the valve. Just got a rubber seal here on the flange. We'll get rid of that rubber seal now. Put it aside and then take off our valve and that's it guys all it is plate a piece of uh, machine belt or conveyor belt over here and um, holes drilled in it but uh, what's happening here for me is that i've got a leak coming through this bolt through one hole over here so what i'm going to do is i'm actually just going to weld that shut uh, put a spike a threaded thing through there so we can bolt the, the valve on the other side onto the spike and not have it as a hole because right now this bolt goes through the hole and it should be part of the hole it should be the plug of the hole it should just be there if you want to look at it yeah so let's take this back up to the workshop do a bit of work bring it back down put it together cycle this bad boy and uh, that'll be that okay guys just want to give a big shout out to my unofficial collaborators basically kitted out today in beck top to bottom beck uh, function trousers their crew shirts denim jacket and then i've got my jim greens on my feet this is pretty much a standard attire for me on the farm. Back clothing, that's it. And then Jim Green footwear. Either them or Scumba. The guys down the road, yeah, but my shoes at the moment. They're in need for some repairs. So we're just waiting for lockdown to finish before we get those in for repair. But you'll see them again soon. And boom! Just like that, we're back in the workshop. Got both our valves over here. We've got our impetus valve on this side. Plugged up in the vice at the moment. And we're going to start stripping this one. Scared of talking, drowning so there we go, there's the issue. Is that this middle hole over here should just be a, like a piece of thread bar. And uh, shouldn't have a bolt through it. Because I I'm, uh, was winning with a bit of Teflon tape, but you just have to replace it every now and then. So I'm over replacing it. Just going to modify that quickly, put them back together. Get back on the road. So there we go. And you see we've got had the Teflon tape on this over here it's worn away at the base so it's obviously leaking through that so idea yeah, i'm gonna weld that little guy on there we're gonna paper key on the plate <laughs> in my last episode i went over how to get started welding and i'm back here at where i was working we're not going to carry on with this mower today but i'm just going to touch up that uh, that valve that i was showing you earlier um if you're interested in welding you check out that video getting started welding i go through my process what i use around me the kit that i wear when i weld and uh yeah sure it's a short little video where i started attacking this project but i've got to get a bit more steel to carry on with this might be next episode uh, we're going to be working on this guy again but enough of that let's uh Tack this guy together quickly. Get it done. Clock is ticking. Time for the weekend. Work is coming to an end. I got my eyes wide open. Savor in the moment. Trying to breathe it all in. If I could slow down the clock, I would. When I'm with you, I just feel so good. I have every play every single night. So for now, let's just take a 
comes together like a plan but anyways worked out nonetheless so what ended up happening was that uh, small piece in the middle that we started with actually broke out here on the drill holes it was a bit cracked already and then it came out so what I ended up doing is then discarding this idea and actually taking it over to a whole bolt pushing a bolt through that hole now and welding the head of the bolt in from the underside of the bolt so that I end up with uh, it sealed up around that join and then I might just cut that shaft a bit shorter. Done with this part, let's go to the valves. Okay, so we've got both the valves here. Impetus valve set and ready and then our newly welded check valve coming into our pressure chamber. Very simple. SAF guys, simple as fuck. Okay, so what we're looking at here is our impetus valve and our check valve. They're both on just a flange, they're a plate between the flange. Um, our impetus valve is not what we're focusing on today, but our waste or our valve check valve going into our pressure chamber, which is this pipe over here. That's what we've been looking at. Um, and so what happens is our water comes down our drive pipe, comes in here, floods out this impetus valve until it shuts. Once this impetus valve shuts, this big ball of pressure forces the check valve into the pressure chamber to open as this drops back on. And because we've got it spring loaded, that's quite rapid. So that's rapid. Water starts flowing out again instantly. Um, and as that water flows out, that water stops flowing back in there because the pressure, back pressure from inside starts pushing down, shuts that little thing, that little flap that we've got in there, and the cycle starts over. This one closes, boom, forces pressure in there. As it forces pressure in there, this one opens, equalizes, that closes from top pressure, boom, cycles. And it just goes cycle, 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 24 hours a day. Um, you've got 1440 minutes in a day so this thing goes at about 140 beats a minute and we can work out how many cycles that is in a day and how many cycles that will be in with a year. How much water you'll get within a year just from a 50 mil pipe like this on our system. But let's switch it on see if it cycles and uh, go check our flow rate. Can you believe how quickly that switched on? Hey, okay. it's just charging up there. So I sniffed a valve over here. So we're just passing the four bar pressure assist site. If we can get to five bars, we know we're up at the top of the hill. Okay, so we can technically, we've got five bars, we've got enough pressure to get to the top of the hill. And this guy's still climbing. Open up on our delivery here. Because we've opened our delivery, water's now flushing up the pipe out of our pressurized vessel. But if we open too quickly, we drop our pressure too fast, and then the cycle shuts down. So what we do is we crank that slowly, open little bit by little bit just filling this line up until we get enough back pressure on the system to make sure it cycles itself okay we're now in the full position our delivery pipe is open to its max our pressure is sitting at two bars so what's busy happening now is we have enough back pressure on the system to force this to shut while that's opening so we get that cycle going but we needed to build up this back pressure and that is water in the pipe water in the pipe up elevation is head and that head is now at 20 meters so the water is 20 meters above us according to this pressure gauge here, telling us that we're at two bars because we're at two bars we know that the tail end of the water is up at 20 meters but we're our delivery is up at 50 meters so we're coming out to the top at the vegetable garden at 50 meters and so this needs to build that water up in the pipe all the way to 50 before we'll get delivery. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave this guy for a little bit. We're just going to leave it cycling down here. Um, we're going to head back up to the top of the hill and uh, chill for a bit. Maybe have a little bit of blurny corn. And um, yeah, we'll check the delivery on the other side. Okay, well, we're back up at the system. 
the water tanks we set up here. With two 5,000 year Jojos thumbed into each other. And as you can hear, we've got water. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the pipe out the top, we're gonna let it uh, equalize or normalize the flow out, and we're gonna see exactly how much water we've got coming out here and we can plan appropriately. Um, so I'm gonna pull the pipe out and I'm just gonna show you around the, what we're doing with that water. Uh, just using it down the garden below. Sweet, so we're up here, this is just stabilized. This is the delivery end of our ramp pump. This is the water coming out of the dam 50 meters below us in terms of direct elevation. So I've got a 500 mil measuring jug here, half a liter. What we're gonna do is we're gonna time it with our trusty old Casio over here. And we're gonna work out how long it takes to get half a liter of water and multiply that up to figure out daily rate. Let's take it. Twenty-five seconds. So twenty-five seconds for half a liter, right? What does that mean? Well, that means we've got one liter in fifty seconds, or we've got one point two liters in a minute in sixty seconds. They're fourteen hundred and forty minutes in a day, so it means we've got a thousand seven hundred and roughly a thousand seven hundred liters in a day. Basically, the water that's coming up there ends up like this. There's always going to be a bit of sediment in the bottom of it, but this has been settling out for about a week now. Um, it's pretty clear, obviously got a bit of sediment in it, but uh, we managed that. No problem, we've got an inline disc filter with our drip irrigation system. Well, this brings us to the end of another episode about this ramp pump and the evolution of its story. Um, and it is Father's Day, so I'd like to dedicate this video to all the fathers out there, my father particularly. Without him, none of this would be possible. We've shared in the evolution of this project. <laughs> it's given us both more gray hairs, I'm sure. But anyways, it's been fun. And as usual, if you guys are still here at the end of my video, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button. It gives a, a lot of weight to the YouTube algorithms and all that kind of nonsense happening in the background. And as usual, thanks for joining. Thanks for sticking around for another brew. We'll see you again next time. Keep it real.